uh, with I think a real treat for all of us. Uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, uh, David Horsey here. Uh, David is a two-time Pulitzer Prize winning editorial cartoonist uh, with the uh, Seattle Post Intelligencer and uh, he's also a political commentator for the LA Times. His work's been syndicated by Tribune Media uh, Services in more than 200 newspapers, and I'm sure every one of you has seen many of his fabulous artistic works, including the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Chicago Tribune, the Houston Chronicle, and the Boston Globe. Uh, you know, he's received the National Press Foundation's Berryman Award for Cartoonist of the Year, in addition to those two Pulitzer Prizes, and when he's not wowing us with his artistic creative talents, he likes to spend a few weeks every summer uh, being a cowboy in Montana. So I'd love to introduce you now to David Horsey. Good morning, everybody. I want to assure you those cows in Montana, all, uh, all their methane is captured somehow. Or not. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, good morning. I'm, I'm sort of the, the comic relief for you all, although really what I am going to show you isn't all that funny. Um, I was uh, going through um, all, all the cartoons I've done about, uh, or many of the cartoons I've done about climate change to, to, to share with you today, and uh, a theme developed. So uh, we'll, we'll start with this one. Um, the evolution of man, I, you know, human beings have, have definitely progressed. We've gone from living in t trees to uh, living in high-rise buildings, and we've, our, our tools have advanced from, you know, stone spears to iPhones, uh, which has not necessarily improved our posture. Um, but the question is whether, uh, how, how much wisdom we've gained in that whole long process and um, I got to find my little clicker here. There we go. Um, we're still kind of slobs, <laughs> we'll put it that way, um, for most of uh, humankind's existence. That didn't matter a whole lot, but around the time of the Industrial Revolution, it became more of a problem. And uh, we, we now uh, are a little bit like this guy, Homo sapiens at home. Man, how'd this get, place get to be such a pit? Well, we did it to ourselves. Um, and as you all know, that, that is creating a, a much larger problem now with uh, climate change. And the question is, are we, have we evolved enough? Are we smart enough to, to, uh, to deal with this much bigger issue? Um, we'll look at this cartoon. Maybe it'll give you an idea. Faced with disastrous shifts in the global climate caused by ever-increasing consumption of fossil fuels, Homo sapiens will respond to the threat with a highly evolved intelligence. Greenhouse effect? Hey, it ought to be great for a tan. Um, now, this one significant thing for me about this cartoon is, if you look down in the corner there, I drew this in 1988. That means it's been 31 years since I did this, um, and I'm not sure we've proven ourselves a heck of a lot smarter in, in those three decades. Um, this is another one I did uh, around that time, and I imagine things in January 2050. This guy's sitting on the beach saying, I don't care what they say. This global warming scare is just a bunch of loony left-wing environmentalist anti-growth hype. And his companion says, so is this your first winter here in Juneau? <laughs> and what's struck me about this cartoon, again, it was done probably early 90s. Um, there is news now that the fastest, the, the, the state with the fastest rising uh, temperatures is Alaska. So, sadly, <laughs> reality is catching up with these cartoons. I cannot exagger exaggerate enough these days. Um, and I, I'm hoping someday I can think of some scenario that we won't actually end up living through. But when I now think about it, uh, those those first two characters in you know 
pumping their gas in 1988. I think they now have children who are still driving through all these warning signs and stop signs and saying, you're right, it's better not seeing what's coming. Um, and so the question is, what, what, why are we like this? Why are human beings like this? And I, I think part of it is that climate change is such a huge thing, it's hard to get your brain around it. Um, and it, it's, 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 it's easy to, after worrying for 10 minutes, get on with the next little thing that you can manage. And uh, this next cartoon sort of speaks to that. Um, I remember a few years ago, I think this was 2012, uh, physicists have just confirmed there's a God particle, the Higgs boson, that binds the universe together and makes all things possible. I mean, do you remember this great announcement? And I thought, that is really cool. And I thought, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> and neither does the guy there in the Dodgers shirt. He's saying, we're out of beer. Um, it's kind of, it's the easiest thing in the world to hear about something big, whether it's good or bad, and then, you know, just go back to your daily life. Uh, perspective is everything, as that cartoon is, is saying. And for a long time now, at least three decades, we've had important people warning us all about climate change, that some bad things are coming. Um, I'm not sure that makes all that much difference. Uh, Pope Francis was a voice crying in the wilderness saying, repent. Um, uh, but I don't know, people didn't listen to the Pope. Um, we're still pumping out the, the, the bad gases. Um, and I think it's sort of a secondary, th a second thing that holds us back is that not only is it hard to get your brain around some, something as big as climate change, but the, uh, it, it's, there are certain ideas and myths and ways of seeing the world that people are just more comfortable with. Um, and here's an example of that. There were some ice storms in the south a few years ago, and I, I drew this cartoon. This uh, mom there is saying, well, this ice storm surely proves there ain't no global warming. And their daughter, who's a little more tuned in, said, actually, mom, warming disrupts terrestrial climate patterns, thereby producing extreme weather phenomena like the polar vortex. And to which dad says, hush, gal, if I want science learning, I'll open a Bible. <laughs> and, you know, I guess this is all quite understandable, but, um, you could, you could describe this way of seeing the world as sort of medieval thinking, pre-scientific thinking. Um, here's what I mean by that. Uh, here are examples of pre-scientific medieval thinking. The earth is flat. The sun revolves around the earth. Global warming is a hoax. And you may notice the, uh, the, the name on the door there. The Republican Party, sadly, <laughs> has been sort of taken over by deniers and pre-scientific thinking. Um, now, another way that we have always thought, I guess, that gets in the way of really confronting this issue is, is something that uh, the first European settlers brought to, to North America. We've got a native there looking at the Plymouth subdivision plan saying, but how will you mitigate the impact on water resources, forest lands, indigenous species, waste management? Sorry, chief, but we came here for liberty, not land use planning. And, you know, this is, this is the attitude that really built this country, you know, made people move west and, and create cities and industries. And so it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's what is, uh, made us all very wealthy and, and uh, more uh, advanced than any civilization in history. Um, but, you know, at some point, you kind of have to adapt that, and, and, and really that attitude is stuck with us. I imagine this developer on holiday, wow, looking at the mountains, wow, isn't it perfect? Well, almost. There's a 
dispute about what perfection may be. Um, now, it's not just Americans. I'm not trying to blame us for everything. And it's not just contemporary human beings. This sort of way of seeing the world, approaching the world, is, has been with us from the very beginning. And uh, I imagine this image of the first libertarian and the serpent in the garden is saying, Eve, don't let some self-appointed god tell you what to do with your private property. You're right, she says. Let's put the strip mine right over there. Now, sometimes it isn't uh, as, as direct as uh, you know, saying, OK, I'm going to build a strip mine. I don't care. Um, it, it, sometimes it's, there are ways to think what you're doing is really the, the right thing, a good thing, or a, a safe thing. Um, and I, I return to Adam and Eve for, for this approach. The, here we are, there, there's this, the serpent again with an oil lease, and uh, the angel has come down to let Adam and Eve know they've screwed up. Somebody's going to be very annoyed that you open this place to fracking. And she says, but they said it could be done in an environmentally friendly way. So sometimes, you know, there's an excuse for our mistakes. Um, and that is we have uh, a lot of people working very hard to convince everyone that, you know, this stuff is going to be OK. It's, it's sort of like the, the tobacco industry in the 50s and 60s trying to use science and a lot of propaganda to let everyone know that smoking is actually good for you. Doctors smoke. It's all a great deal. Um, and you know, my job is to find a metaphor for, uh, for uh, uh, to use in my cartoon, something that will sort of take uh, reality beyond into something that people can latch onto right away. So I, those folks who kind of sell these ideas that maybe fracking is OK or uh, cigarettes are, are good. Uh, I pictured this way. Those are the polluting industries. OK, sweet cheeks, go work your way through the congressman, then on to the reporters. And one more time, give me your pickup line. <clears throat> hey, big fella, I can make you forget all about global warming. So corporate science in the, in the uh, employ of the polluting industries. Um, now, one of the ways these folks uh, convince you that what they're doing is good and, and essential and cannot be changed and cannot be transitioned to something else is it's going to cost jobs. Uh, you're going to lose jobs if you don't let us do this thing. Um, looking at the Keystone Pipeline, I did this cartoon, and the, uh, the jobs pipe really wasn't that big. It was a tiny little spigot, but boy, the carbon pollution was big. And of course, the profits were huge. Um, and often that, that kind of is the balance. But jobs is always what gets talked about. And the current administration in Washington, DC kind of made that promise uh, to coal, coal miners. Um, and it's a promise they're not really keeping very well. There's a big event. And uh, these coal miners are saying, Secretary Pruitt, how, how will getting the EPA and going backwards on climate change bring back our coal jobs? And he says, oh, gosh, fellas, your jobs are never coming back. But the president thanks you for your gullibility. Um, now, the president, who has obviously been a, a great source of, of material for me, and I can't figure out on this issue whether he, in a way, is gullible as well, or if he just chooses to believe whatever he hears uh, on, on Fox News in the morning, or if uh, he's actually thought about climate change. But one way or another, uh, his, his stance uh, is what it is. Um, there, last year, there was a, a report um, from uh, uh, an, yet another federal government report looking at uh, warning of the economic perils of climate change. And 
This is how I pictured his response to that. U.S. government report says American economy will be hammered by climate change, and Trump responds with his head in the sand. Warming? Bah, it's plenty cool in here. Ooh, I think I see coal. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's, he's an interesting guy on this issue, as on every issue, but maybe this one in particular. He uh, really doesn't want to listen to scientists or experts. He would rather go with his gut, and his gut tells him that he knows more than anybody else. And whatever happens to him explains the world. Uh, this is how I pictured that. Climate science, according to the stable genius, as he once described himself, Trump is cold, therefore global warming is a hoax. It's that simple. Um, now, because of this approach to uh, global warming and climate change, uh, President Trump has brought to his administration some interesting characters. Um, first one was uh, Scott Pruitt at EPA. Here he's saying, I drained the swamp just like I promised, and this is where I drained it to. So there's Pruitt, the swamp creature. Um, as, as a result, as we all know, the EPA has shifted, shall we say, in its approach to uh, environmental issues and climate issues. <clears throat> and I, I return to Eden to comment on that. Adam is saying, hey, are you spraying pesticide in the Garden of Eden? He's saying, it's OK. Trump's EPA says it's perfectly safe. Although if I were you, I'd put some clothes on. <laughs> so, um, Then over at Interior, we have, uh, there was another very interesting appointment. Um, Secretary Zinke, who uh, I pictured this way, how the West was lost. We gave it to the mining companies. Now, um, Zinke and Pruitt, of course, are gone. Uh, both of them had ethics issues that, that sunk their careers in government. But there are more where they came from. And it's sort of like a sequel. Uh, hasn't that movie been done before? Yes, over and over and over and over. It's the swamp thing, or the thing from the swamp this time starring Interior Secretary nominee David Bernhardt, who already is being investigated for ethical uh, violations. But they keep coming. Um, now, <clears throat> you'd think that enough wildfires or uh, periods of drought or big, bigger and bigger hurricanes would kind of get the message across to people, but some people really don't get the message. Um, like Florida's Governor Rick Scott during the hurricane, run for cover, and don't forget the climate change is a hoax, and Rush Limbaugh being blown out to sea, which would be a great development. Uh, <laughs> saying truer words were never spoken, Governor Scott, truer words. <clears throat> This is a fun one to draw. Um, but despite uh, the, you know, the, the ever worsening hurricanes, the, the, the increasing temperature of the oceans, the uh, sea level rise, the, the wildfires, the, uh, the, the, the drought areas, um, you know, maybe the biggest, you know, phenomenon that we're having to deal with right now is this one. Um, as the Carolinas recover from Hurricane Florence, Hurricane Donald continues to wreak havoc. Climate change is a hoax, he says. Um, now, the thing is, that there are a lot of progressives, a lot of liberals who would, <laughs> are just you know, wishing for this guy to just leave, to be gone one way or another, impeachment, election, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and I guess that's a worthy wish. Uh, I, the problem is, 
whenever Trump is gone, that doesn't end things. Uh, and I imagine that here, be careful what you wish for. Um, president Trump is being taken off somewhere in a straitjacket, and the new president, Mike Pence, is saying, President Trump, it grieves me that you are unable to complete your term. I salute you, sir. Now, as America's new president, I promise a calm voice, a steady hand, and total transparency. Starting with this revised presidential seal, it's now a subsidiary of Coke Industries, um, a, 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 in, an industry that uh, Mike Pence has been a subsidiary of for a while. Um, and so that, that's one, you know, that's not going to fix it. And it, it'd also be nice to think that. Uh, you know, the, the politicians and leaders who are ignoring this problem now will somehow end up in some far reach of hell, in a special place in hell for those who could have done something about climate change but did nothing. Hannity, you told me it was a hoax. This is your fault. Donald, I'm not the one who was president. So, I don't know, Donald and, and Sean Hannity may, may end up in a terrible place, but um, I'm more worried about where we're ending up, um, whether we're going to have a bit of hell on earth. And I imagined what uh, things would be like in 2075. I've moved on from the 2050 number now as we get closer. This uh, girl is talking to her grandfather saying, all those old Republicans pretended climate change was a hoax just to protect the oil and gas industries? Why in the world did you vote for them, Grandpa? Kids, stop talking like a commie and just appreciate the nice view of Lake Tahoe. See, that's a laugh a minute. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the thing about, as, we, as you all know about uh, about climate change is maybe the biggest difficulty of wrapping our brains around the problem is that it's a very incremental thing. It's not like you know Pearl Harbor, a, a day when something terrible happened. It's not like 9/11. It's not um, it's not something you respond to in the moment. It's something that just creeps up on us, and uh, it's a little bit like. Uh, the old image of the, the frogs in a pot of boiling water. It starts out just fine. This guy's saying, crank it up a few more degrees. A nice warm bath never hurt anybody. But sooner or later, we're all in that pot together with the frogs, whether they're deniers or not. Um, and, you know, I, I've done it. Uh, a number of cartoons blaming poor Republicans and, and, and Donald Trump and Sean Hannity for this, but there are a lot of politicians who seem to be on the right side of things who um, kind of haven't done enough either. Uh, it's, it's easy to talk about climate change and then, like the guy who wanted to know if there was more beer, move on to other issues. Um, so some years ago actually I did this cartoon of, uh, I think this was an Earth Day cartoon, politicians uh, praising Mother Earth and giving her plastic flowers. Um, basically not giving her their sincerity and their hard work. So I guess the question is what if we don't get something done, we don't uh, deal with this in an effective way and if our brains have not evolved quite far enough to, to, to deal with the problem, well, obviously, sooner or later, there'll be a, a, a day of reckoning. I'm, I'm hoping it actually comes on um, Rush Limbaugh's show. Our guest today is Gaia, the Earth goddess. So, Gaia, about this global warming hoax, aren't you just fine if it gets hotter? Hey, it's no problem for me. I've been hot before. It's you humans who will have to find another planet. I can imagine uh, Rush Limbaugh on Mars, but actually that would be good. Um, 
Yeah, actually, Mars is, is, is uh, the alternative some people suggested. Yeah, let's just get out of here and go to this other place. You know, I guess it's an interesting challenge and an adventure, but I somehow saying our alternative is a place with no water, no air, no animals, no trees, no plants. Doesn't sound real appealing. It seems like it might be a better idea to, to, to stick with what we've got. Um, here's life on Mars. Sure, it's too bad we humans made Earth uninhabitable, but I'm kind of liking it here on Mars. Mom, Dad punctured his spacesuit and freeze-dried himself. <laughs> I have the weirdest job. I mean, I take these terrible things and then try to turn it into a joke. Um, but <clears throat> nevertheless, I, I'm, I'm going to do something I've never done. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to end with a song. Now, I really wish I had an accompaniment or a guitar, but I, I, I bumped into this cartoon and I thought, this, I, you know, it was so clever of me. I had to share it with you. So, um, and if you want to sing along, you can, although I know you won't. You'll watch me up here embarrassing myself. Nevertheless, <clears throat> I want to finish with a climate carol that I created a few years ago. Okay. You'd better watch out, you'll freeze or you'll fry. The bad greenhouse gas is filling the sky. Climate change is coming to Earth. Our economy's built on old fossil fuels. We think we'll get rich, but really we're fools. Climate change is coming to Earth. The polar caps are melting, the seas are on the rise. The glaciers out in Glacier Park disappear before our eyes. It's probably too late to clean up our act. Some goofballs deny it's even a fact. Climate change is coming to Earth. Where Santa has his workshop, way up in the North Pole. They'll soon be planting palm trees cause we're burning too much coal. The storms will get huge, the coastlines will sink, the farms will dry up, we're all on the brink. Climate change is coming, climate change is coming, climate change is coming to town, or oh, Earth, or somewhere <laughs> around here. Anyway, now, <laughs> wow. <clears throat> I don't think I'll, Beyonce has nothing to worry about. Um, anyway, that kind of concludes this. One thing I did want to say in closing as I was, when I arrived here yesterday, I was very heartened to see so many people in suits. Um, this used to be an issue where people either were wearing lab coats or tie-dyed t-shirts. So actually, I think it's a good sign. Despite everything I said that was very negative, because that's the nature of political cartoons, um, it's a good sign that you all are engaged in this and figuring out ways to, to uh, bring this home in very practical ways to more and more people. So I want to thank you all for what you're doing. And thank you for inviting me here to uh, show a few of my cartoons. <laughs>